Have you been told you need to do probate to transfer the assets of a deceased loved one? Welcome to this VCW Law presentation. I am attorney Vernita Williams. I will be speaking with you in this presentation about what you need to know when you probate an estate. If you're listening to this presentation, you've probably been told you need to do probate. You probably tried to transfer the assets of a loved one who recently passed away and you discovered there were some steps you needed to take that required court intervention. Well, it's called probate. So then you begin the journey of talking to different probate attorneys. You started trying to find out how much does it cost, how long does it take, and you eventually ended up going to an attorney's office and talking about the process. Well, a lot of times when people come to my office to do probate, I find that it's a good thing if I can help them to understand the process so that they can know what to expect, know how long it will take, know how much it will cost, and know how to make the process go smoothly. One of the things that I emphasize very early is how long it's going to take. A lot of times people come and say, I just want you to help me do some forms or let me know what forms I need to file with the court. And I just want to get this thing done this month and get it over with. Well, usually you cannot get formal administration done within 30 days. There are a couple of processes in the probate court in Florida that you can do quickly. One of them is summary administration and one of them is something called disposition of assets without administration. However, when you are doing full-blown formal administration, it will usually take as much as a year or more. So one of the first things I emphasize is pace yourself. Let's understand the phases. Let's understand what we can and cannot do in each of the phases so that you'll know what to expect and not be frustrated and disappointed in the process. There are three phases, three, generally three phases in the formal administration probate process. The first phase is hiring an attorney, uh, filing your initial papers, and getting an executor or personal representative appointed. Now this phase normally doesn't take that long unless there is a big, big family fight over who's supposed to be the executor. In this phase, the person initiating the court probate action will meet with an attorney. You will need information on the names and addresses of all of the heirs, and you will need to have a general understanding of what assets need to be probated. In this process, the probate attorney will prepare initial paperwork to file with the court to request the appointment of a personal representative. Now, in this process, it always is so much smoother if you can have all of the heirs sign a simple brief document consenting to the appointment of a specific person as personal representative. If that is not possible, then sometimes that disagreement over who should be the personal representative will make the process longer. In this initial phase, the chief goal is to open probate and appoint a personal representative. So you will need to determine if there is a valid will that names a personal representative or if you will be going by the state statute to name a personal representative. That is what you do in the first phase, appoint a personal representative. In the second phase, you will do what is called marshal the assets and determine liabilities. In the second phase, it is extremely important to identify all of the assets owned by the decedent that are going to be a part of the probate process. These are assets like uh, real estate, uh, bank accounts, vehicles, stocks, bonds, whatever assets need to be transferred through the probate process. They need to be identified and in many instances, in many states, an inventory needs to be filed. In the second phase, you also need to determine the liabilities. Who are the people who are saying that the decedent owes them money? What claims do you anticipate will be filed against the estate? All of these things need to be done in order for you to figure out 
what will be available to transfer to the heirs and what is available, if anything, to pay any creditor's claims. So in this second phase, you're gonna marshal the assets, figure out what are the assets, what's the address of the property, what is the value of the property, where are the vehicles, and you need to know where these assets are located. In my experience, there have been uh, some exotic vehicles in some of the estates that I handle, and we had to literally find them because people liked them and they took them and tried to hide them and keep them for their own use. So it just depends upon the types of assets and the types of people that you're dealing with, uh, whether or not it would be difficult to find and to marshal all of the assets of the estate. In the third phase, in this, the third phase is a phase of distributing the assets and paying any creditors. This is a phase where you determine whether a particular claim that has been filed by a creditor in the second phase is one that has to be paid. Sometimes a claim has to be paid fully. Sometimes uh, the attorney can negotiate a partial payment as a settlement. And sometimes a claim does not have to be paid at all. It just depends upon what type of assets in, are in the estate and what type of claims. For instance, if an estate only has homestead property and that homestead property was sold, the money from the sale of the homestead property does not have to be used to pay claims. However, if there are assets other than the homestead property and there are claims, then it's very likely that those claims may have to be paid partially or completely. It just depends upon what types of assets are available and what types of claims have been filed and what's the priority. In many of the states, there is a priority of payment of claims that's governed by statute. In the state of Florida, attorney's fees are, are considered a class one expense. Administrative expenses are considered class one. Those would be paid before any of the claims are paid. So there are a lot of factors and a lot of probate rules and a lot of statutes that have to be weighed simultaneously in making a decision. So just know if you are doing formal administration because you need to do probate, you have three phases. Get the estate open in phase one and appoint a personal representative in phase one. In phase two, identify and marshal all of the assets and figure out the liabilities. And in phase three, petition the court to distribute the assets to heirs and to pay creditors. So those are the basic phases. Now, sometimes estates are much more elaborate and you have things going on simultaneously. Sometimes the phases may overlap, but basically those are the three phases. Now, some of the things that you can take into account in the process of doing probate to make things smoothly is this. In a probate process, when you meet with the probate attorney, always be very honest about the information that you know. And if there are heirs involved in the estate, don't just say, well, I don't know where they are. I haven't seen them in 10 years. I don't know why I should have to be bothered with them. They were not around to take care of the deceased person. If you withhold information, it is highly unlikely that the court is going to allow you to just omit or overlook or ignore that person that you don't want to say where they live or you say you can't find. The court is probably going to appoint an independent attorney at litem to look for this person you say you couldn't find. That's gonna be additional attorney's fees that will have to be paid out of the estate. So the more information you can just give the court, the less you can expect to pay in attorney's fees when it comes to finding heirs. Also, if there are items uh, that are part of the estate that are assets and you know where they are, please reveal that information. You wouldn't want to spend $10,000 in attorney's fees looking for something that you can just tell the court where it is. And many times I see people fight over something and create a lot of attorney's fees and the attorney's fees that accrue over that particular matter are more than what the item is worth. Would you want to spend $10,000 in attorney's fees for an item that's worth $1,000? So when you make your probate decisions, make good, intelligent, logical decisions. And make sure you don't allow your emotions 
to spend $10,000 on something that's worth $1,000. So this has been a VCW Law presentation on what you need to understand and know about the probate process when you probate an estate. If you need further information or you would like to contact us, please go to our website at vcwlaw.com and you can find additional information there on our law firm. And if you'd like to call us regarding what you hear in our VCW Law presentations, please call us at 786-831-9483. That's 786-831-9483. Thank you for listening.